Alrighty, and we are live right here on a hashtag Power Talk show right here. My good name is Brian Sanko, and I'm so happy. I feel ecstatic and excited to be right here. I'm sitting in today for Sherry Blessing. Definitely, she'll be here next time and definitely can always as well interact with us on our socials and let us know where you're watching us from. We'll be glad to sample your feedback because this is an incredible show. We're about to get into an interesting conversation right here that will get you informed and at the same time, you know, leave you thinking, you know, what are some of the things that I should do and not do. Do you know what you're going to talk about? We're going to talk about a journey of uh, self, uh, literally self forgiveness and healing. And I understand most of us have been through so many things in our lives and especially millennials, the trauma. You know, I was speaking to a friend of mine uh, yesterday, I'll call her Sema. She keeps on attracting people who are just like her dad. And I'm like, what do you mean? So, you know, your story, like, you know, you're, you want to date someone who literally doesn't remind you of things that you went through as a child. And I was like, probably that could be trauma bonding. I'm not a professional <laughs> psychologist or a therapist or a counselor, but from far, if I squinted a little bit, I could tell that it's trauma bonding. But today we are focusing on matters as healing and forgiveness. Are there things that still hurt you? Are you holding on to that heavy grudge and you're like, I will never forgive you. But the forgiveness is for you, not even for your offender, aggressor, or assailant. It's literally for you. And that's what we're going to delve into right here. So I'm inviting you back at home to let us know where you're watching us from and by the way you can also find us on our youtube shortly we'll be streaming and if not definitely you'll still get this episode right on the hashtag power talk show right and uh, to introduce my powerful uh, la ladies who are in studio with me uh, i've got Tweba Sinoi. she is a registered psychologist uh, alongside uh, lois waruingi she's a counseling psychologist as well i feel like the both of you should have you know <laughs> should have known each other off of the air but it's amazing how you guys have met here and i was asking do you guys know each other and kidogo you resemble but you guys kumbe don't know each other but look at the power of tv <laughs> reuniting <laughs> so, so karibu karibuni sana uh, maybe I'd like to start off with you, uh, Lois. Maybe how did you become a professional counseling psychologist? And maybe what are some of the things that you've done in between that have led you to be on this show right here? Uh, basically, when I was growing up, I really had a desire of helping people out on things they go through, even as much as I didn't have so much knowledge about them. And I recall it took me a journey, even yeah. talking to my parents to my yeah. sisters, and I could actually ask them questions about life. Most of the questions that I was curious about. And from there I was like, why not try counseling? Yeah. But then I didn't know the process and all that. Then right. I came about social media on my TikTok page. That's when right. I started talking about it, mental wellness, what uh -huh. you need to do when you're in situations that no one else can help you. But right. th and I just came to realize the best thing you can do is get vulnerable with someone you don't know because it's easier for them to help you out rather than someone you know. Yeah, because of guilt, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guilt, because I, I, I agree with that part because there's a, there's a time I also had a conversation with a friend. I was like, I'm really comfortable to share my worst things with somebody I've met for the first time. Now, to get to rant a pote other than a person I know because uh, internally you'll feel a little bit judged. You'll be like, eh. There's always that part. Mm. Right. And I feel like it's guilt, right? Could be guilt or shame or fear. Mostly it's fear and what you're going to do with that information after you have it. But the woman, right. they know, I, I don't know you. I cannot get you. So right. I'm okay. Ooh. But you know, it can be really tricky though. <laughs> Lastly, before I get to you, Tweba, so uh, did you like go to a school for it? Did you get to, you know, and do you have a license as well? And also, when officially did you start practicing it? I started this year, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a journey because I've been in different hospitals and referrals right. to people who are dealing with different issues, mostly home-based because mm -hmm. with the current generation, you're dealing with people who are dealing with so much drugs. Right. Um, young people are dealing with masturbation and all that. And I was like, yeah. ah, if I did this course, the first time I did it online, mm -hmm. it wasn't easy for me because I felt maybe I needed a physical class. But then right. I came to realize with my work, yeah. it wouldn't work out perfectly well. And that's when I did my course. Yeah. And I did exams, I qualified, and I'm just waiting for just small, small things. Right. Yeah. But so for you are uh, meeting clients and you're interacting yeah, with yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meet clients. Right. Yeah, based on... It depends with what they want me to counsel them. Mm, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Interesting. Yes. Good one. What about you, Tweba? 
Is it okay to call you Tweba? Yes, yeah. Right. You know, there's people like, call me Beyonce. I'm Jay Z. Please shut up. I'm Kim Kardashian. But you know, yeah, it's good that. I found my name. Right. Um, my journey was a lot like hers. I think no. we actually for a lot of psychologists, that's where we start. Mm. It's no. like I want to help people. And sometimes it also comes from a place of like, I wanted certain help at certain right. in a certain point in my life. Mm -hmm. So now that I've grown up, I've interacted with psychology material, I've talked to people. Can right. I be that for someone else? Mm -hmm. So mine was a bit like that. Right. Uh, my interest started in like high school. I had mm -hmm. wanted to do anthropology, but everybody was like, oh, anthropology, Hailipi, Kenya. So I was like, yeah. okay, fine, guys, Nisawa. <laughs> so I just started getting into psychology books, and then in right. uni, now I decided to pursue it properly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I completed my undergrad, and then I started working. I started out in private practice. Right. That's essentially where just a counselor does their own thing. They're not employed. Mm -hmm. And now, now I've, thank God, I've gotten a job now with a clinic. So that's right. where I do like made majority of my work but I also still do the private practice right so yeah how many years now and when officially did you start I started okay f officially working it was May 2022 uh -huh. so almost two years now oh, almost yeah, two years now but you're registered it yes, means you I have am. a certificate and yes, certified. I, I do. Nice. I, got gotcha. I could have brought it if you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, I got you. No worries, I got you. Now, let's get to the topic at hand. Uh, in just a bit, by the way, I'll be sharing with you the question of the day. So, uh, in, in this day and age where, you know, in the adage of social media, a lot of people are going through a lot. Um, if you guys can recall story of Brand Shira and whatnot, and so many other things that continue to happen, you know, they are saying it's Gen Z's, others are saying it's uh, Elon Musk's new Twitter and in any freedom of speech. But all these avenues literally are there to help people express themselves. I remember there was a time, uh, is it China or the, no, it's the US that wanted to ban TikTok. I think they still have that motion still in court. But then uh, I love the fact that there was, there was someone who went and said, I use TikTok as a form of therapy to vent yeah. because they usually sit in front of the camera and they say all the things that have hurt them yeah. literally mm -hmm. and now speaking of heart uh, most of us have been through at least something <laughs> at least a season in your life where like i met you and you did this to me and if i'll forgive you maybe sweet jesus are rudy too <laughs> but all these things a lot of people do not know that forgiveness is not for the person who hurt you yeah. And I remember is it Nelson Mandela who said it's like drinking sulfur or acid and expecting the other person to die. to die. Yeah, yeah. and mm. it's literally for you. So uh, when it comes to forgiveness, uh, how does a person begin that journey of self-forgiveness? Because I believe, for me, I believe I forgive myself, and then I, sometimes you're angry at God, and then you can forgive God, and then slowly God can help you now to forgive your aggressor. So maybe for you, Treba, how can a person start uh, self-forgiveness that can lead to healing, possibly? Mm, I think just like you said, self-forgiveness is such a complicated thing. Right. So forgiveness of others is easy. You can yeah. practice it and get really good at it. But I think because, because we know ourselves and we can see our intentions, our actions, our thoughts, our feelings, we tend to judge ourselves a bit harsher. Right. So you might feel like forgiveness is, ha why should I give forgiveness to someone who I can yeah. see their whole process? Right. What they were intending, what they did, how they were feeling, how they planned to do this to someone. Right. And that's when we are looking at ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I think even in my own journey of self-forgiveness, I've come to see that there's forgiveness is not like I don't decide yeah. when, like, you see the way we try to say to you, oh, this person deserves forgiveness, this one doesn't. Sometimes yeah. you can do that, but why should we disqualify ourselves from forgiveness? Right. W just because we can see our whole processes. Yeah. Even sometimes when we intend, like we sit down and say, Mine enda kufanyam to hivi. Yeah. Why should we not forgive ourselves? You know, at Correct. that point in time yeah. when you're planning to do that thing, yeah. what was probably leading you is the pain the fear exactly. yeah. there's also that thing of like i want justice to be served you know right. so i want since justice is not being served i want to go and do it on my own but yeah. when you come back to it you only did what you knew at that point in time if you mm -hmm. had known better you would have done better right you know and like i know that's like a cliche thing for us to say but mm -hmm. for me i truly believe it if i'd known better i would have done better right. since i didn't know better i need to reach a point where i can forgive that version of myself because me now hindsight is 2020 i right. can see all the things i was doing wrong at mm. that point in time, I couldn't. Right. So for me, I feel like it's important to at least consider forgiving mm. yourself. Yeah. Just because at that point in time, you didn't have as much knowledge as you have now. Right. Just based off of that. Oh, good one. Uh, mm -hmm. For you, Louise, um, 
you know, I know uh, she's mentioned pain. You know, sometimes pain, I, I believe you can, you can be so wounded or extremely wounded and you're blinded by the pain to a point um, there's even no thought crossing your mind of, pos of a possibility that someday it will get better. Someday this season will be done and you'll be happy again. So for people that are caught up in that uh, miasma and the minutiae, meaning the nitty gritties of this one happened, this one happened, I can't let go, like you are swimming in toxicity. But maybe uh, the key to unlocking healing is forgiveness. So if you are to advise someone, uh, how should they start that journey as well? I could first consider what they do each and every time they, are, they have disagreements with people and how they react to that. Yeah. Because I know people who journal that down and they get over it. Their okay. people will be there, they'll be crying for two to three days and maybe they're going to overcome not basically the whole thing, but yeah. they're going to be in a better state of communicating to other people what they feel at the moment. Uh -huh. But I feel any time you escalate that and you appear the bad person in this picture, it's going to drain you to spaces you cannot walk out of. But yeah. the moment you think about yourself, I'm like, this is me, I feel bad about it. Yeah. And the other person could not even be in the picture totally. You're there, right. you're feeling hurt, you're feeling broken, and they have walked away. Mm. So the first thing is, I need to get right with myself first. Yeah. Anything else is going to get yeah. along. Because right. let me g give a scenario of um, having a disagreement with someone, you didn't resolve it, then that person, that person pass on, yeah. like they die. die. Mm -hmm. what, what are you going to do at that point? You cannot yeah. communicate because basically we think the only way you can get over something is, the on is just that time when you want to talk about it, but it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. Some people are very unapproachable, even right. in such situations. Mm -hmm. But the only thing you can do is make peace with yourself. Right. Then everything else is going to work out perfectly well. But if you still hold some grudges within yourself, you cannot move on. You're right. going to hold on to so much pain. You go back to asking people, what do you think I should do? And it's going to escalate because people are going to give you different views on how they think ab about it. Yet, you're the mm. person who is feeling the, the pain within yourself. Right. Yeah. I read an article somewhere, I think should have been on The Guardian, mm -hmm. um, that talked about this, this lady who, she was sexually assaulted, she's, uh, she's black American, she was sexually assaulted, assaulted I think by the stepdad, and uh, that's how she literally switched sexualities. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, maybe it's uh, not respectful to say switching, but that's how she decided to be, you know, a person of the other sexuality, because she always, like each and every time she meets a man who wants to date her, She's she, in the article they're saying she sees the stepdad. She ah. sees the stepdad. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine uh, such a person starting the journey of forgiveness and healing. Uh, to such a person, how can it happen so that they become peaceful? Like literally, she, uh, I think at this, at, at this stage she has a problem with men, right? Yeah. You can literally tell she doesn't want men mm -hmm. because of that s sexual violation that happened as a child. Mm -hmm. So is it possible for such a scenario to, you know, for her to be at peace with, you know, it happened, and let me start, maybe I should restart myself again and, you know, start dating men. Because it's not all men who offended her anyways, but that's a serious case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious case, yeah. I think it's possible, because mm -hmm. the first thing I have to do is to listen to her story and right. what she feels about it. Because mm -hmm. from it, she's going to talk about so many things that she cannot tell anyone else. Maybe the process, how it happened, how she felt at the moment. Yeah. But the moment she talks to me about it, we start from somewhere. So right. what did you feel? How did that mm. make you feel? Maybe in between someone is going to talk about, I feel like my image was cracked at some point. I feel like yeah. I cannot approach them. I feel like I cannot even have conversations. Yeah. But I have to remind them to be positive mm. at all costs because she's holding so much negativity within herself, but yeah. time is not waiting for her to make decisions as to the things that she wants, understand? Right. So mm. I have to be there, remind her, time is moving. Right. She needs to talk about it more often, as mm -hmm. much as she can. If she can be able to write it down, it's going to be even easier for her because yeah. I could not be with her all the time, but she needs to get over it. Yeah. Um, another aspect that I will bring about is remind her that all men are not like the man who did the same thing to her. There are kind yeah. men out here, mm -hmm. but if she's going to walk with the same analogy, like men do this because yeah. that man did that, right. I mean, you'll see any other man and you're like, no. Yeah. And there are still good men out here. You just need to position yourself in a state where you can be able to accommodate a good man and be open-minded that even as much as they get into your life, they're not going to bring negativity. Right. Yeah, because 
I'm thinking about this in, in, a, in a state where you were dating someone, right. that person hurt you, mm -hmm. and you're still holding them back, and mm -hmm. they're not even aware about it, they moved on. What are you going to do? Most yeah. of the time, people heal in relationships with other people. The only right. thing you need yeah. to do is... Mm -hmm. Don't just swim in that relationship without the knowledge of where you're yeah. going. Don't, I think the best thing is separating emotions and reality at all times, just yeah. in case you want to heal. Right. Yes. Uh, that's really a complex one, Trevor, mm -hmm. because uh, she's mentioned relationship. It means you're carrying over the heart from the past to uh, the present relationship. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can deter even from meeting a good person. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, this person has a right to be pissed. They have a right to be angry. Yeah. They have a right to be resentful. They have a right to feel bitter. So uh, how can we convince them that, you know, better days are coming? Because, you know, I, I came to understand about trauma as well, that also is surrounding stories, you know, heartbreaks, mm -hmm. uh, stories of disappointments. You are disappointed by your dad, so you'll never forgive anyone who called a dad. Mm. And that literally is hurt yeah. and uh, pain. Uh -huh. So uh, for such a person, where do you even start walking this journey and convincing them, you know what? better days are coming and you better be happy now because yeah. that will also start building up the next yeah. phase mm -hmm. of your life to be happy yeah. because uh, like you said if you keep on holding on to pain it's blocking you from meeting good things and even good energy and you're carrying those you know traces of heart and mm -hmm. attracting still bad people mm -hmm. yeah well i i actually agree with a lot with what she said uh -huh. especially on the emotions separating emotions and reality right and this is i i also work with a lot of uh, people who are, have gone through trauma and are seeking professional help. Right. And that's one of the things that I try to work on with them. Yeah. Emotions like, yes, and reality. And reality. Okay, please, please paint a picture for us. Okay, let's, let's paint the picture. <laughs> yeah. uh, let me use an example of like, the relationship, like you said. Yeah. Right. So in the past relationship, uh, you had this ex who was, let's say, maybe even abusive. Right. Or like, let's say, mildly abusive. They would make some certain comments, do some certain things that are just yeah. a, a bit hurtful, but you yeah. overlooked them. In short, he was, a he was a mild narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> Using narcissist lightly, Quote. but yeah, you know, like just mild yes. behaviors, maybe not yeah. outright uh, abusive, yeah. but right. just mild ones. Mm. After some time, let's say yeah. you una, una break um, up. Mm -hmm. So after that, now you have to be so aware of the emotions that you're carrying from that. Mm. Right. The, not only the pain and the hurt, mm -hmm. but the disappointment, right. the resentment. Mm. Because the more aware you are of those feelings, mm -hmm the better it is, the easier it will be not to project that onto the next person. Because it's true, by the even when it comes to men, I know there's always this talk about, oh, men are trash, men are what, mm. but it's, yeah. again, a generalization. Right. There are some men, there are some women who are working so hard not to pass on the heart that they got from wherever yeah. went to you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. just like Riza said, you know, you have to be reach a point where you're aware of what happened to you, yeah. accept what happened. Right. Accepting doesn't mean approving. We mm. can never justify. If someone hurt you, if someone was mean to you, mm. we right. are not justifying. Absolutely. But accepting that it happened. Right. And saying, okay, this happened to me, it's the effect that it had. Can I be aware of it as I continue to move through life? Uh, can I be aware of it as I meet new people, as I continue to date? <coughs> yeah. So that when you meet someone who is actually respectful, right. who is actually kind, mm -hmm. you can see them for who they are and not through the, ro the colored glasses mm. or your past experiences. Yeah, that filter. Uh, yes. That filter. That filter, mm -hmm. by then, let me tell you, aki na kujanga too automatically yeah. when you've gone through a bad experience. Mm. Mm -hmm. But can you be aware of that filter? Right. You know, so that you know that, okay, this, this, this guy, this lady is actually mm -hmm. kind to me. Mm -hmm. They are actually a safe space. They are actually a good person. They are healthy. Mm -hmm. Can I see them for who they are and not right. who my emotions from the past are nah. trying to make them look like? Mm -hmm. That's why I really agree with that statement. Separating yes. emotions from reality. We're not denying the emotions, we're not denying the reality. Yeah. We're just saying that emotions can sometimes not fully encompass what reality is. Yes. So I think that would be a good place to start. Then from there, you now build on that. Because yeah. that now allows for a lot more emotional flexibility, psychological flexibility for you to see the facts on the ground. Yes. Not carrying over what happened in the past into the present. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you reminded me, there's th I think there's a certain preacher or a motivation speaker who is talking about emotional bank account. <laughs> he, he, he was painting a picture of where like, there's people who have been exhausted. They've been through things that have exhausted happiness in them. There's no joy in them. Yeah. There's no peace. And uh, it's just anger. Yeah. So uh, for a person who's 
has zero <laughs> a zero emotional bank account how do you also build uh, this uh, this uh, greed in them to, for them to start feeling strong because I also heard somebody say if you're not a person that forgives very often it means you're weak that's the mm -hmm. that's, that's what the person said mm -hmm. so I don't I don't think I don't know if strong people forgive very fast and weak people and I also don't understand the definition of weak people maybe you, you can help uh, uh, Lois mm -hmm. uh, is it true a strong person forgives very fast and maybe a person who is, has not yet built let's say who has not yet built the capacity and the gravitas to forgive tries to hold on a little bit hard before they let it go I think whatever people do they create a defense mechanism for that right. the strong people Oh, strong people. Yeah, strong people. Uh -huh. I mean, a lot has really happened in their life, and even uh -huh. when something big tags along, it's not, it's no longer big because they uh -huh. know how to deal with it. As much as they don't have the answer at the moment, they're uh -huh. like, "Is it costing my peace? Is it worth it? Is it, yeah. is it costing my time? I don't right. need it." As yeah. much as it, it seems big to other people, to them, it's like, "Man, yeah. this is a walkover for me." It's a molehill. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I mean. Yeah. I don't want to live with it. I don't mm -hmm. have to take more time thinking about it because it doesn't help me. But yeah. for a weak person, they have to be there thinking about it. How did people feel? How, I mean, they yeah. have so many questions. And mm -hmm. mind you, they don't have anyone who is going to answer those questions because there was no one who was there at the scene. Right. So you'll be there, you'll cry, you will get yourself into spaces no one will walk you out of. Mm. Yeah. So at times I feel if you're a weak person, just get strategies on how to overcome whatever you feel. And mm -hmm. be the first person to accept yourself as much as you're feeling the bitterness within yourself. Because, yeah. I mean, no one can understand you better than you understand yeah, yourself. Self, yeah. If today I knew if someone... This is coming from a therapist, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> a psychologist. Nobody can understand you better than you understand <laughs> yourself. So if you think a psychologist will understand your situation, you are wrong, child. <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> So true, I agree with that. Nobody can understand you better than yourself. And what I mostly yeah. tell weak people, the so-called yeah. weak people, because right. they don't know what weak is, I just don't understand where weak is because yeah. you're the person who has accepted to be in that situation. Yeah. One thing I tell them is be vulnerable to people, yeah. not to 10 people, just one person, because that one person is going to help you think in yeah. a different way rather than you mm -hmm. think and see things. Because mm -hmm. if you're there and you're living with people who are comfortable with their weakness, like, that person hurt you, or oh, you're okay, yeah. so let's cry for two days and you're going to be okay. I mean, right. you're not moving. You just need someone else who's going to confront the situation and tell you, yeah. man, that relationship is over. You have yeah. to walk over it. Wake up and open another door. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> because the worst, what's, the worst, what's yeah. the worst that can happen if you're right. there thinking about it? Mm. And you'll just get to realize with time and with the current generation that we have at the moment, not like us, where the yeah. people who used to be broken, you're, you're there crying for a month, you've not healed, you're losing weight. Right now, if a man lives, yeah. you're living with him, like your <laughs> life is moving. Right. Because you're delaying so many things from happening in your life. You're yeah. going to lose a job because you didn't attend for like two to three days. Because then you are depressed. Oh my gosh, she left. I know who's <laughs> going to feed, feed you by the right. end of the, the day. Mm. No one is going to pity help party. you out. Yeah. I think that's a pity party. But uh, do, do you realize also people that uh, feed on pity parties, sometimes it helps them. I think so. How? I don't know. What do you think? How though? Because maybe they're looking for a sense of validation. Mm. And the more people will tell them, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry this happened. Come here, let me hug you. I think it's giving them uh, some sort of hope to continue going on. Don't you think so? I think there's a line that needs to be drawn. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Where, yes, we can validate you, we can comfort you, we can say, yes, it was a painful experience. But right. I like that approach of like, yes, deal with the pain, mm -hmm. let it out of your system. After that, remember you have a life to live. Your mm -hmm. life is not over. Right. As long as you're still living and you're breathing and you're going about your day, mm -hmm. your life is continuing. Yeah. And actually, you know, that's the funny thing. We don't think of how important it is to move on. Yes. But it's, it's actually a key part of the healing process. Because right. when you move on, now you go and meet new people. You go and have new experiences. The other day I was talking to someone who they've been going through a really tough time. Then yeah. just the other day, they went out for a walk. Yes. And they saw the sunlight filter into the trees. And they realized yeah. life is worth living again. And I'm like, look at that. Imagine. Yes. Yeah. So you see, it's just such connecting a, with nature. Yeah, it's such yeah. a huge part of it. Just oh. Like I like to tell my clients, Think of the concept of looking up. Right. Imagine that you're walking through, you're just walking through town. Every single day, you're always walking, looking down. All right. you see is the ground. Mm. Mm. All your, your, your orientation is down like this. Right. The day you look up, you notice, hey, now you're mtu ni mrembo. Hey, now you're mtu vizuri. Hey, this architecture is nice. Hey, the nature is beautiful. Imagine. Right. 
-hmm. So you see, after that period of grieving, of crying, of validation, comfort, remember to look up. Yes. Because life is continuing. Right. And there are so many beautiful experiences, beautiful people, beautiful things yes. that are still waiting to be experienced mm. by you. And as in, they are waiting for you by the way. Right. They are just waiting. They are like, Nani ya kuwapi by the way. Mm. We are waiting for you to come and experience us. Right. And for you to remember that your life is bigger than this one thing that hurt you. Absolutely. Because that's also something that happens with trauma by the way. Mm. Because of how intense traumatic experiences are and how we, you know, mm. even the brain starts to mm. focus on only survival. Yeah. yeah, that's why we struggle to enjoy things when we are really yeah. living in survival mode. Yeah, or when we get to some certain conditions, and it yeah. reminds you exactly of you at ten. You see, yeah. so you're like, nope, I don't want to hear you. Go out. I'll see you later. Yeah. Now on that, see you later. Not whether when we come back, we'll actually be sharing with you a uh, question of the day in just a bit. But continue to interact with us on the hashtag Part Talk TV show. We'll definitely be glad to hear your feedback as well. We are taking a, a short uh, commercial break, but remember, you are still hanging out with the Turbo Seno. She is a registered psychologist and Lois Waring, a counseling psychologist as well. So keep on sending your questions very fast. I'm going to be sampling them. But now, let's take a break. We'll come back with much more. Stay right here.